Delta 9 Cannabis Inc. is a vertically integrated cannabis company based in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Delta 9's wholly owned subsidiary, Delta 9 Biotech Inc., is a licensed producer of medical and recreational cannabis and operates an 80,000 square foot production facility. Delta 9 owns and operates a chain of retail stores under the Delta 9 Cannabis Store brand. Delta 9 intends to have 20 retail stores in operation in Manitoba by 2021. The company has an agreement to supply 2.1 million grams annually to the Manitoba government, in addition to supply agreements with Oxley Cannabis and Canopy Growth. Delta 9's shares trade on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol NINE. It's a pleasure to welcome the CEO of Delta 9 Cannabis, Inc. And I just want to make sure, John, because I am a professional, Arbuth, Arbuthnot. Is that close enough? Uh, I could, I would be great if I could hear John. That'd be cool. We can't hear John. That's all right. Uh, John, while we're trying to get your Hello. audio working. Uh, Is that a little bit? There we go. There. Hi, John. Perfect. How are you, man? I'm very well. How are you? I'm okay. Um, Arbuthnot. Uh, close enough. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some of the things that have been happening recently with the company. Uh, you announced that the Saskatchewan Liquor and Gaming Authority has authorized you guys to supply cannabis directly to the province's retail and wholesale markets. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that deal in Saskatchewan. What's that going to mean for you? What's that going to mean for uh, the company? Uh, yeah, so I mean, a lot of Delta 9's rollout uh, uh, for the initial stages of legalization was focused on our home province here in Manitoba. Uh, a lot of the idea from a distribution standpoint was around market share and, and market saturation. Uh, you know, we were certainly able, I think, to see the, the early success in that model here in Manitoba, where, where we enjoy uh, relatively higher market share from uh, both a wholesale and a retail standpoint. Uh, leveraging the success, I think, of that that early take on the market we're now pushing uh pushing west saskatchewan's the next stop for us uh, i think you know real benefit of that market is we get to sell direct uh to the retailers uh in the province and and we're now in a position to be making shipments to retailers across the province of saskatchewan uh as, as we start to see success in that that format as we expand west uh we'll ultimately look to to participate in all markets across canada it's interesting the idea that you guys uh will be shipping directly to retailers um, and the retail model is different across the country. Just remind me, uh, what, it, what are the rules in terms of a retail space in Manitoba and Saskatchewan and how does that benefit uh, your company? Yeah, so slightly different uh, province over province, but in Manitoba, uh, we are one of four exclusive uh, licensed retailers. We have uh, four uh, pre-allocated licenses to operate retail stores here in the province of Manitoba, so we do consider ourselves a vertically integrated cannabis company. Uh, in the province of Saskatchewan, slightly different. They had a, a lottery uh, program that selected, very similar to Ontario, a, a number of uh, people who would be eligible to open retail stores. Uh, there's been a few dozen stores have rolled out across the province of Saskatchewan and, and more are coming online all the time. Uh, and the provincial model in Manitoba, uh, very similar to other provinces, uh, requires distribution through a provincial uh, distributor. Uh, Saskatchewan a little different in allowing for direct to retailer sales. So I, I think a number of benefits in terms of the flexibility there allows us to work direct with the retailer uh, who, who's actually controlling the messaging to the end consumer. So, you know, obviously the idea here is to get our, our branded and high quality products uh, through to the end consumer. I think Saskatchewan's a great platform for that. Amazing. Let's talk a little bit about your supply agreements with uh, Oxley and Canopy. Seems like that would be a good uh, fit for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I mean, on top of the provincial uh, base distribution or distribution into the recreational uh, market and through to the end consumer, uh, we do have a few business arrangements as well. The first is with Oxley Cannabis, uh, where we look to distribute our products to them on a bulk uh, wholesale basis. Uh, a lot of these products are, are going through to then become extract products and work through, uh, I'll call it the Oxley business model of, of touching the upstream, midstream, and downstream platforms. Uh, so we started to make 
make first shipments on that early this year. Uh, the collaboration with Canopy slightly different, uh, but but similar from a distribution standpoint. We're di distributing direct to Canopy and and really leveraging their sales platform across Western Canada. Um, Ed, uh, do you have any questions for uh, our uh, our friend John? Yeah, just uh, remind the viewers how many uh, how many how many shares are outstanding in uh, in Delta. Yeah, for Delta 9 right now, about 85 million shares uh, fully outstanding or uh, issued outstanding uh, brings our market cap in the area of 140 to 150 million right now. I think, you know, if I were to point to one thing uh, as a part of the Delta 9 story that's really going to have an impact for this year, it's it's top line revenue growth. Uh, we saw Kronos report earnings for Q4 yesterday of around five and a half million. Uh, Delta 9's now released guidance uh, on our Q4 and our year ends, which will be released uh, mid-April, but we're targeting a revenue range of between, uh, I believe it's 5.4 to 6.4 uh, million. So, uh, you know, obviously significant revenues for a company with a market cap of our right. size, and, mm -hmm. and we'll look to continue to leverage that success moving forward. Um, what about your partnership with uh, Westleaf in Alberta for a new production facility? All part of the plans coming up? Uh, so actually have, have been some fairly recent developments on that. Uh, we had participated in an early investment uh, round with Westleaf uh, on that facility we were calling Delta West. Uh, we announced end of January that we had reached an agreement with Westleaf, who is now publicly traded uh, as well, uh, essentially to sell our interest in that extraction facility in exchange for shares, uh, 5.6 million shares in, in Westleaf's publicly traded parent company. Uh, frankly, we like the exposure to their retail unit. Uh, we like that this kind of diversifies our upside potential mm -hmm. as, as Westleaf uh, begins to execute on all of their business segments. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I just wanted to just, before we get on to the next thing, there really is a couple things at play, whether you, you supply for other companies and you supply direct to retail. Uh, I think that's the, especially here in Ontario, that retail model uh, is going to be the one that I think, and I want to know what you think, in terms of an expansion of growth who knows how many, I mean, there's a Tim Hortons on every corner. So who knows how, how much retail the country will be able to support? Have you thought about that? Yeah, and I mean, obviously, we talk about ourselves as a vertically integrated uh, cannabis company and, and all the way through to, to being a retailer here in Manitoba. Uh, we now look to expand that out to Saskatchewan, Alberta, and other provinces that will allow for vertically integrated retail. Uh, Ontario has been pretty slow, as we, we all know. Uh, yes. This lottery system ha has been interesting. <laughs> I mean, I threw my... Yeah. Uh, Let's come back to that lottery system, which is insane. We'll just get back to that. Finish up, John. <laughs> well, interesting was generous. Uh, but, you know, obviously, as, as a slow approach, uh, I, I think ultimately we're going to see a little bit more of an open market platform in Ontario. Uh, I, I think it is very exciting for us the opportunity of getting into the Ontario market on either a, an ownership or a franchise basis. Um, you know, we're now to a point where, from a retail perspective, we have all of the systems, we have the, the point of sale, the HR back end to be able to expand uh, very quickly on the retail side. And, and we see a lot of benefits to, to controlling the retail, uh, controlling the direct-to-consumer marketing and branding elements, uh, as well getting that live feedback from the consumer on what products uh, are working, what products are selling, what products are not selling. All of that has a tremendous amount of value uh, for us as a production distribution company. Have you, um, at Delta 9, have you thought a lot about what that retail experience is going to be? And before we get to that, uh, I think April 1st is the deadline for Ontario, Ed. Uh, you have basically th those franchises that were awarded in the lottery, as uh, John and I were just saying. You have until April 1st. There's a penalty if you don't open up on yeah. the 1st of April, which is so bizarre because there's all these people that would have been easily ready to go. And then the lottery system is like, hey, uh, last week you had a, a farmer's market at St. James. This week you've got a lottery, you've got a, a, a franchise yeah. to sell yeah. cannabis. And if you're not ready by May 1st, oh, is it April, you, lose, May 1st? you lose it. Well, I thought it was oh, April 1st. No, yeah, yeah, but it's you, May 1st. you got a month. Oh, okay. After that. But after you get to, you you get to May it. 1, you're done. There were so, so many qualified people that could have had that, including Delta 9. But back to you, John. Um, so is making the retail experience important, like, like, uh, 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 in it, like sort of as a demarcation, that, that would your retail experience different than another's? Do you know what I'm getting at? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just to touch on the Delta 9 take on that, I mean, we, we wanted to, you know, provide a, a retail experience that was very similar to walking into any other, you know, big box retailer. Uh, we wanted it to be well lit, inviting uh, with customer service staff that are, are knowledgeable and, and passionate about the products that they're selling. Uh, you know, I know everyone likes to use the analogy of we're trying to be the Apple store, mm-hmm. uh, but realistically, our branding uh We've kind of taken the, the overall Delta 9 brand. We've mashed up with an Apple store, and, and that's very much what you'll see. Sweet. Uh, a lot of our storefronts are larger on the square footage side. We we tend to lean between three and 4,500 square feet, so they are our large square footage. Uh, we carry the full uh, slate of the ancillary, the value-add products, bongs, vaporizers, things like that. Uh, and, and we tried to provide you know the best shopping experience that, that – people can have for purchasing cannabis products very different than uh, I think some people's experiences with the black market dispensaries uh, in Ontario, BC, uh, and and really show a public looking face for the industry that's very professional, very organized and very legitimate. I've uh, had the uh, pleasure, I've been at a few uh, cannabis uh, expos and uh, I was at one, I think it was either Lyft or O'Cannabis last year, and I saw a mock-up of a retail space and I had to laugh because, you know, I'm a Myself and Ed here are 160 years old between each other. I mean, it's yeah. we've been around a long time, Most sir. Most of it's on my side. Exactly. But when we were younger, you forget about the dispensaries. You used to have to buy weed underneath the gardener. I mean, now you walk into a place that looks like a day, it looks like a David's tease. So when I was at these conferences, I was I remember saying to a friend of mine, I said, the, "What's coming, whether it's Delta or anyone else, is a retail experience that we baby boomers and even older could never have imagined." I love hearing you talk about it that way because uh, it should be not only uh, demystified, but it should be an experience just like walking into a. A nice wine store or a, you know, a place where you want to get information about a certain vintage. Do you not agree? Yeah, and that's been you know the very interesting part from our perspective to see since legalization is, is people walking into the store and you see their eyes light up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they really are blown away with what they're seeing uh, in the retail context. And, you know, again, comparing this to black market where, you know, you've got your guy and uh, on a good day he's got two products. Uh, the, the cheap stuff and the good stuff. Um, you know, you walk into our store this week, we've got about 30 different varieties of dried cannabis. We've got pre-rolls, we've got oils, we've got gel caps. Uh, we have the full spectrum of products that are available. I think we've pushed through some of the early uh, supply issues and, and are now starting to see a lot more consistency from the market. And uh, you know what, for for your average cannabis consumer, I, I think that's, that's where we're going with it. Hey, um, by the way, speaking of what's available at Delta 9, uh, uh, do you sell any live resin or um, chatter? Asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, not just yet. Um, oh, no, and, right. and still looking to see what we're going to see this fall from from the feds on the uh, the rollout of the expanded extracts. But um, and you know what, we can't quite ship to your office in Ontario yet. But we're working on that. Uh, hopefully, some point in the future. Uh, Ed, you got a quick question yeah, just for a John quick before question. we let him you, go. You went public uh, a year and a half ago, roughly, or late, late 2017. How much money did you raise back then? Uh, yeah, so we went went public last November. Uh, we raised $23 million, uh, through a bought deal uh, financing in December 2017. Uh, last year, we raised about another $18.5 million through equity, uh, and we secured a $12 million credit facility through Canadian Western Bank. Uh, I believe it's one of the first full-service credit facilities that includes right. commercial mortgage, uh, drawdown credit facilities, credit cards, really the full so slate you, of financial services. With, with revenues uh, ramping up, you're well, unique. With revenues ramping up, you're well-funded. Uh, we feel we're well funded for our expansion plans for for this calendar year. We've uh, now released our our broader expansion plans out into 2022, uh, which includes additional retail stores and and ramping up our production capacity to in the area of 60,000 kilos a year. So, uh, you know, a lot on the horizon for us moving forward. Um, just a couple quick seconds, uh, questions I should say, uh, John, before we let you go. One is an agreement with Nanosphere Health Sciences to provide their nanotechnology delivery system for cannabis across the country. Tell us about that, then I have a question about, uh, and, and just stand by. John's about to tell us the age he was when he bought his first LP. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of your Nanosphere question, uh, you know, it's it's a... I guess a proprietary platform for us to take a, a cannabis extract, 
uh, to essentially reduce the particle size for the cannabinoids that are in that extract, uh, and, and in doing so, increase the uptake and increase the efficacy, decrease the overall dosage that's required. Uh, now, we're still pretty early stage. Uh, the company is in the final throes of getting approval for our own oil-based products for sale. I'm hoping in the next 30 days, pending a Health Canada approval, uh, the Nanosphere products will be a little bit beyond that. Uh, but otherwise, and pending some uh, or a successful bid from a regulatory standpoint, we plan to roll those products out uh, in the next few months, first on the medical side of the market. But I, I think the broader implications with this type of technology are, you know, I can increase the efficacy of a drinkable product and make it so that the uptake is similar to uh, an alcoholic beverage, uh, as opposed to taking 30 minutes to an hour to, to, to see the onset from a cannabis edible. So uh, I think there's a lot of utility there. Uh, in, in terms of the age, uh, I, I admit to being 29 uh, today. Uh, I was admittedly 19 years old when I started Delta 9, uh, what seems like decades ago uh, from a cannabis industry perspective. So you actually had your LP at age 22, according to our research. 22 was when we actually got the license. I think we raised our first capital when I was 19 or so. Good for so. you. Uh, listen, uh, I hope this isn't the last time we talk because I I got to tell you this, the retail model is exciting. The nano dosing model is even more exciting. <clears throat> and when edibles become legal in the fall of this year, I think what you're going to see, and, I, and I'm, I'm just going to leave you with this thought, companies like yours and others are going to be able to be more specific in the dosing of edibles, tinctures, and health products for people that want to have that. Because right now I think there's a little bit of uh, nervousness around edibles because it's so unpredictable. Yeah, and, uh, you know, generally, I think the feedback we're getting from consumers is we're pretty early in terms of the uptake uh, or, or the the adoption curve from from consumers. Yeah, uh, they're really yeah. just trying these initially, uh, but a lot of people, and and we actually see that the balanced products, the high CBD products, are the highest in demand. Uh, so interesting to see now the, the consumer demographics that are looking for those types of products. And I, I think as we expand out these regulations, we start to bring on a whole new slate of consumers uh, that's looking for that optionality around these other, other products and, and delivery systems. Uh, obviously, huge implications on the medical side as well. Well, that's the thing is I think there's so much growth in this space, not only for investors, but for people that are looking for therapies around getting rid of traditional opioids and uh, pharmaceuticals. John, what a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for, uh, for joining me. I hope that wasn't too, you know, filled with nonsense. Uh, no, a pleasure as always, and keep your eyes on Delta 9. Delta 9, one of my favorite planets in the Star Trek universe. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, John.